Hey everyone, I attempted to stream this live um, at the time, but uh, having having some issues. So I um, just wanted to kind of dive in and give people an overview of CartQL. CartQL, I've received a few DMs lately of people kind of just wanting some examples and getting started. Um, so hopefully this video provides that information um, and you find this useful. So I built CartQL is as a uh, GraphQL endpoint for managing cart state, uh, data and state. Uh, you obviously you could do this on the front end with various uh, libraries, but um, you know not always. You know there wasn't always a library for every uh, front end framework or language. And uh, built this API just so it's kind of you know agnostic to all of that, and you know you could just use it with whatever anything that can make a network request can in fact use the GraphQL. CodeQL API. Um, so you don't need to be using any of the fancy libraries on the front end, such as Apollo Client or Oracle or um, any of the others that kind of take care of the caching aspect. Um, those are great if you do, um, but you know anyone that's diving into get, getting used to GraphQL, you'll pretty much find that you can use plain old um, fetch and, and make requests that way. So uh, let's have a look at what this actually is and, and see some of the queries and the mutations that are available. Um, and hopefully that kind of gives you a quick intro into what this is. So this is a landing page at cartql.com. Um, I've recently updated this to remove a lot of the things around the actual checkout and payments flow. Uh, I think that can be really handled by you, the person that's implementing it. And I'd much rather cartql just focused on carts. And I want to expand the functionality with carts here to include things like discount promotions and integrating with other services as well, um, even other e-commerce APIs because at the end of the day, carts are just state, um, you know, and then they become kind of static when they're kind of converted to an order. Um, so, yeah, uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff on this land page here, like built for the jam stack, flexible card items, and there's no replatforming. The perk of using CartQL is it doesn't require you to bring your own inventory. You can kind of bring your own inventory with it. Um, the way that the API is designed is that it accepts a variety of different inputs uh, types and you can just pass along the data for your products and those will be added to the cart and the cart state is then updated. So what we've got here is kind of a little uh, overview of some of the queries and mutations that are available. Um, so we can see here we've got a long list of different things that are required and there's obviously some fragments here uh, in this example. Um, but we can just fetch a new or an existing cart by simply run the query for cart and passing in the ID. And if we want to do some fancy things like change the currency of that cart, well, we can also pass along that currency. We can set a code, we could set the symbol, we could set the delimiter, we could do a lot of different things in here. Um, but primarily, uh, you will spend a lot of your time just using the query cart and passing along an ID. Now, CartQL is a shared system. There's no authentication um, if you don't use the payment stuff. If you're interested in using that, then feel free to DM me. I'll get you in on uh, one of the subdomains that has this kind of the Stripe payment intents going. Um, I'm a bit on the fence whether we should kind of open that up or not. Um, as I say, I think payments can be handled by you. Um, and a lot of the different frameworks for React, for example, uh, kind of allow you to embed serverless functions or API routes and something like Next.js really easily. So handling all that payment logic could be done on your side and it can really just be you know bespoke to your platform. Uh, this isn't intended to be kind of a no code solution. Um, if you're gonna be using CardQL, you will be writing a lot of code um, for, for handling card state. And I'll kind of go over some of that. So we can get a card. So why don't we kind of just click this little icon here uh, and this will open up the graphical playground. Uh, I'll just change the ID here and I'll just call this uh, stream and then I'll make a query. And we can see that we get the, the response here back for the cart. And this is just using some of the fragments that we have available. Um, we can open up the docs and we can see all of the different uh, things that are available on the cart type here. Um, so we've got all these different things, things like abandoned, um, you know, when the cart hasn't been updated in the last two hours, it's then marked as abandoned. Uh, you know, the subtotals, which give you the amount as an integer, the currency or the formatted string, the currency has all of this and, you know, the documentation is there for you to read and the GraphQL types. So have a play around, get, get going with those and see what those look like. So we have this cart called uh, stream, the ID is stream, and we have this endpoint here. 
Um, and anybody that visits, visits api.cardql will have access to this playground, so you can use the playground to interact with the API. Um, so this is just getting a cart. Uh, there's no email, there's no items in the cart, um, it's not abandoned, and it's not, and uh, you know, it's empty. There's nothing, nothing there. So there's a couple, a couple of nice little helpers that'll get you going with that. Um, so let's have a look at what it looks like when we want to add an item to the cart. So we've got this kind of example mutation. Um, again, let's open that up in the playground. Um, and the cart ID will be stream because we already have that. Um, and if we just grab that query, and we'll put that query here, um, we ha now have this mutation for add item. Uh, the ID here, this can literally be a unique item uh, ID, so we can just call this like item ID 1. Uh, this doesn't really matter. Um, it could be a full logo t-shirt um, with a specific color. You can obviously pass in an image. This could be, you know, you know, it could be a URL to the image, so you can display that in the cart when you retrieve it later. Um, and then the price in the uh, in sense here as well, or pencil or whatever. Um, and then when we make this mutation, we have that cart uh, available to us again. Um, we can get back all of the different things. So we could get items, and we could get the ID, and we could get the quantity uh, total, the line total. Uh, and we'll get that amount. We'll also get it in the formatted amount as well. So if we add this, the price is going to be added. Um, we're not sending a quantity that will be inferred as one. And if we make that mutation now, you'll see that we have the items in the cart returned to us. Uh, we have one of the item ID one. We have the amount and we have the format amount as well. Um, and the default is uh, Gribbage Pounds. Um, as the cart here, but you could update this cart um, and you could change the format uh, of that. So why don't we do that? Um, we can run a mutation and we can call update cart and we can set the input and we'll set the ID of the cart, which is stream. Um, uh, and we'll just get the ID back. Um, and then currency is an object, an input object, and we'll set the code as USD. Uh, and we'll make that uh, mutation there. And again, if we run the cart now, um, uh, oh, why don't we add another one of these items? So obviously, when we run the add item mut mutation, it will add this item uh, has a quantity of one. If we add it again with the same ID, it's just going to increment that quantity. And because we've updated the, uh, the uh, currency, we should see that the format amount here is different. So let's run that again. Well, hey, so now we have uh, this in dollars um, and we can see that the quantity has been increased to two and the amount is available to us in uh, since there as well. Uh, then we get other things down here. So is empty is now returned to false because we have things in the cart. And then we've got some other nice things here like total items is two because we have two items in the cart. However, we have one unique item in the cart. Then of course, we've got the subtitle for the overall cart. Um, and again, if we were to go down here and we were to say, I wanna get the unit total, well, I can get that. And let's now add again, so we'll have three in the cart. Um, and we can see here that we get the line total of $60, but then we have the unit total, which is 20. Uh, and the way that's obviously calculated is because there's three items in the cart. And again, down here, this is updated as well. Um, there's a ton more um, when it comes to uh, when it comes to this. Um, we can do things like uh, we can update the item, so we can pass in the cart ID, we can pass in the uh, the uh, the cart ID, the product, the item ID. We can then specify the um, anything on the cart item itself. We can update. So if we take in, let's just grab, uh, let's just grab this again paste this and we'll do update item. Um, now all this is valid. Um, if we do that, it's not really doing anything. We're already telling it what it is. Um, and if we miss some things off, well, that's, that's also fine. Um, but what if we want to change the name of the product? You know, say the, the name of the product's changed for whatever reason or the description. Well, we can now just do that. This is like, half logo T and we can update the name of that item as well. So that's to update a specific item. 
we could also change the price of this item as well so for example we may uh you know you know we may want, may want to add multiple items to the card and based on certain parameters we may want to change the actual price of the product um we can do that as well and if we update the price of the product you'll see now that that's down from 20 to 10 dollars um and obviously that updates the line the unit and the cart subtotals as well um there's a bunch more so that's obviously updating removing items well why don't we add another item to the cart such as item id 2 um cart item does not exist yes because that is updating an item we can add an item and now we've got um this other item here as well which has quantity of one um and if we do remove item and we pass in the cart id and the uh, id of the item we can run that and you'll see now we have uh, just just these items in here we just have one of, of those items set cart items is also another useful thing as well um, there's occasions where you may want to set the cart out right say a user logs into your site and you already know what their cart state is or you have the functionality to i don't know um, allow users to buy this again well wouldn't it be nice to actually just set a cart when you click a button and this is what this kind of uh, mutation is for is if you want to set all of the items in the cart uh, you can do so by using the set cart items uh, mutation so if we open up a new tab inside of here um, and let's use that same id stream um, and again this is going to add these items to the cart um, so we can see that we have total items of three um, and and now we have total unique items as two and that's because we've got one of these but we specified two as the quantity here um, but you will also know that the item that we already had in the cart um, that has been removed this one here um, that set items will override absolutely everything in the cart um, which is pretty cool um, custom item data as well there's an attributes uh, key that you can set an array of key and value pairs on the uh, individual items so if some items have additional information such as engraving or i don't know um you know a, a gift message or something um you could add those to that attributes and it you know it could be that your item has some really advanced configuration or additional things you need to kind of store with that item uh, you can put that on there as well um, could be the color of the product or, or whatever a specific variation well you can use uh, the attributes for that uh, currency formatting we've already kind of dived into what that is but if we just run this mutation again and we pop into here and we change the id to stream and we set it back to gbp we click run you'll see that we can uh, see the currency has been uh, reset uh, and we also get all of these other things as well so we're able to kind of specify i don't know the symbol here and we could say the symbols actually cart ql um, so if we actually run um if we run a query for the subtotal and we get the formatted amount you should see here we have cart and then we have 80 dollars well obviously we don't want to do that so we'll turn we turn that back and we can see that that symbol is updated but that kind of shows the full flexibility there you've got real control over how those amounts are displayed which is cool then we have the empty card option um so we can go ahead and we could say the id stream well that's going to go ahead and it is going to empty the cart um but let's add those items back from before so we'll add those back into the cart um, and then we'll get that cart um, from before now when we're querying carts as well you can also specify the currency and it'll return it in that currency so you'll see here we're returning the items uh, in the uh, in pounds we could also return it in usd um, and that will do it as well um, or at least it should i think it has to be updated um, i think it's the first time you get it it will return it but uh, or set it if the card doesn't exist sorry if the card exists we want to keep it in the currency that it is um, and then you have to kind of use the update card to change 
um, you know, what it's, or what currency it is. Um, then we've also got the checkout mutation. So this mutation here is great if you want to kind of take the cart and ask the customer, ask the user for additional information such as their shipping and billing, and then send that somewhere else. Once this mutation is returned, you may post this somewhere else. And there's actually an upgrade to CartQL if you pay for uh, the kind of the, it's, it's in beta at the moment, but if you pay, if you want access to this, um, send me a DM. But what you can do is once the checkout's complete, you can actually specify webhooks where the checkout response will go to. So this could go to an endpoint that then takes care of sending the user to a download link or something. If it's a uh, digital item, if it's a physical, or even if it is a digital, you might want you may want to take some pay form of payment. Well, you can use webhooks to control all that process, and you can capture when things happen uh, using webhooks. And there's a few webhooks. You know, there's webhooks based on items being added, removed, updated, um, but the checkout is the most important one, I think, um, which is cool. Uh, so yeah, there's there's obviously there's a ton more. What I would say is explore the documentation. There's a little helpers in here for like increment item quantity. Um, you know, delete the cart if you want to get rid of it completely. Um, add some items that aren't items, but they're like tax items. Um, you can do that as well. So we can say the type is uh, either an SKU, which is the default, a tax item or a ship an item. And again, those will then reflect the um, amounts that come back. So things like the shipping total will return the money um, for just shipping. Subtotal uh, is the sum of all the SKU items, excluding discounts, taxes, shipping, um, including the raw format of amounts and currency details. Um, then we've got grand total down here, which includes all of that. Um, so it's really nice if you want to kind of show that as well. Uh, if you're really interested in how this works with some of your frameworks, such as Gatsby, there's a store here which is just using the file system. And this has products inside of the Gatsby file system with some images, and I can then add these to the cart. So if I go here uh, and add a few of these to the cart, you'll see that this is updating here. And this is using Apollo clients, and the cache is all taken care of for us. We can see that these items here are in the cart and all of this is managed for us. All the amounts here, all the totals, they are all configured for us and we can remove these. And if we open the network tab here and remove an item, you'll see that the request here, it's just sending along all of the variables that's required that we've pretty much just gone through inside of the GraphQL playground. So you can see this one here for the remove cart, cart item. Uh, we just send along the cart ID and then the ID of the product. Um, and again, if we were to update the quantity here, we should see um, in the request, the variables, in fact, uh, send along the updated quantity. So that's cool. So that's just kind of a quick overview of what CartQL is. Please give it a try. Please head on over to CartQL.com um, and take the API for a spin. Um, all of the kind of basic queries and mutations that are available on the homepage here and you can click the either the GraphQL icon here to go to the GraphQL playground or you can kind of click this copy button and that will copy the query and you can run that inside of your existing instance. This initial version is open source. You're able to run this yourself. It's backed on MongoDB um, and you're able to kind of host this yourself if you don't want to use the public version. Um, but I will be adding a ton more to this um, uh, as the months go on. So I would recommend that you use the hosted version and you get access to all of that when it becomes available. Uh, and lastly, if you didn't want to use the CartQL domain on your site or uh, directly from your front end, you could obviously mask that and you could use something like Hasura and you could add this as a remote schema. So you could have one schema that incorporates you know, the CartQL API a bunch of other APIs for your content, such as Graph CMS, uh, and a bunch of other stuff. So you can use services like that to kind of stitch these APIs together, and they will then make those requests to the applicable APIs. So hopefully you found this uh, interesting. Uh, and if you've got any questions, please leave a comment. Please reach out to me on Twitter. I'm at Notrab, which is just Barton backwards, my surname. Uh, you can ask me on there. So head to cartql.com, and if you do have any questions, uh, like I say, Twitter, comments, or even just open this little chat bubble 
and we can have a chat on there about what project you are creating. Um, but hopefully this gets you started with GraphQL and with managing shopping carts.